Hi, my name is Nick Rains from Leica Academy Australia. In this video I'd like to look at the settings on the Leica CL and the way I use the camera, the way I use the menu items. It's not a deep dive into all menu items, it's just the way that I use the camera when I'm shooting uh, so that the camera works its best for me. So let's have a look at these menus then. Alright, so let's just turn on the camera and trigger the menus, here we go. So the first thing you're going to see is the favorites and you can see here it says favorites this is the first screen you see when you hit the menu button and these items here can be chosen in the customized controls later on in the menus so this is like a shortcut to certain chosen menu items it's not all the menu items themselves you'll find all the menu items in the main menu option here so starting at the top and just a point of order here that little bar on the left hand side that you can see this shows me that I'm on page one. You should be able to see that. And as I go down the options to the next page, you'll see that bar has now moved. So it shows me that I've got actually four, five pages, four pages, five pages, <laughs> five pages of options right to the end there. And then when you go to the bottom and keep going, you end up at the top again. So you cycle through all the options. It means you don't have to go back to the top all the time. Right, so drive mode, fairly obvious, um, but uh, beyond your single shooting mode and your continuous shooting mode, you also have interval shooting for time lapses and exposure bracketing. Now exposure bracketing is something I do quite a bit. So this allows you to set three frames of two EVs between the frames, which is two stops of exposure. Uh, exposure compensation zeroed out and then automatic means that when you press the shutter button once you get all three frames. Uh, I use this quite a bit particularly in conjunction with the self timer mode which is the next in, in line with two second self timer so I can do an auto bracket of long exposures without having to touch the camera trigger it with a two second self timer and then it takes all three pictures automatically very very useful indeed Okay, focusing takes a little bit of explaining. First of all, I'm using AFS, which is AF single shot. I prefer to use that rather than continuous. Uh, I like to be able to trigger the shutter button and have it lock focus. That works for me best. Uh, the AF mode I have set to field. This works for me the best again. Spot's good for portrait, but general purpose I find field works well. Multi-field I never use. I don't want the camera to decide for me where the image should be focused. Uh, I want to choose a focus point myself. I don't use tracking and face detection. No doubt they work quite well, but thing is if you want to turn these off to go back to field, uh, to single focus or field, then you will need to go back into the menus to do that. So I'd rather use field and have that work for 99% of my shots. Uh, AF assist light, uh, I'll, I'm going to turn that off actually. When you're in the dark, the uh, focusing system needs some light to actually illuminate the subject so it can focus, it needs some contrast. But you also will find that that's quite um, obtrusive and you'll see a light flashing on things. So sometimes that's not appropriate. So I'll leave that off by default and turn it back on again if I need it. Focus assist, this means that when you're in manual focus or you override with the shutter button half pressed, you will find that this magnifies by automatic when you move the focusing ring and it will uh, give you that magnified view in the viewfinder so you can critically focus. At the same time you get the focus peaking which is a red haze over the most contrasty parts of the image which means where the, the, the focus is, that's always the most contrasty part of the image. Okay, focusing, focus assist, touch AF, I have on, I'm going to turn that off because I never use it, I don't really want to, to touch the screen, sometimes one's nose can actually focus for you, so turn that off, if you're in a, on a tripod, then maybe you, uh, you don't want to have to duck down to put your eye to the viewfinder, it's nice to be able to focus in different parts of the picture without having to squat down, so sometimes that can be quite useful. Exposure metering, I always use multi-field. In all the videos of, about camera settings I've done, I've always suggested multi-field is the best one to use. Spot metering is slower. Uh, multi-field seems to be most accurate, but I actually use um, the highlight clipping warning, which we'll come to in a minute to judge my exposure, uh, combined with a histogram. So it, to, to a certain degree, it doesn't really matter, but multi-field is a great starting point. Exposure compensation, uh, that sets, that's at zero at the moment. We actually uh, will be using the dials here to set exposure comp, so we can leave that alone. 
Auto ISO, uh, I've got set here. This is where you would choose your ISO. Um, more importantly, Auto ISO settings means I can choose the maximum ISO that I'm comfortable with this camera using. Uh, in this case, 6400 is about as far as I want to go. So that's the maximum. But this is important, minimum shutter speed. You have the choice of fixing it at a minimum shutter speed or a function of the focal length of the lens. The idea is that you don't want a shutter speed to be so low that you get camera shake. So setting it to a 60th might be considered you know, good, good uh, technique. But what if you're using a zoom lens that magnifies the image and therefore magnifies the wobble? Maybe you want to use a 250th and that's fine too, but you've got to keep choosing them. What you can do is have it vary based on the focal length of the lens. And, and I tend to use 1 over 4f which means my minimum shutter speed will be no lower than four times the focal length of the lens. So in this particular case, this is a 35 millimeter lens, so the minimum shutter speed will be four times that, which is 140th of a second. And that means I'm not gonna get any camera shake. But again, your mileage may vary, and bear in mind that the minimum shutter speed has nothing to do with subject movement. It's purely to stop camera movement. White balance, I'm shooting raw, so white balance has very little effect on the image. I tend to leave that on daylight. Uh, again, shooting raw, so I have this set to DNG here. If you want to, you can shoot DNG plus JPEG, but I shoot DNGs. JPEG resolution has nothing to do with uh, shooting raw, so that's irrelevant. Same with film style, same with scene mode. Electronic shutter extended what this means is that the maximum shutter speed uh, that the mechanical shutter can give you i believe is a four thousandth of a second but the camera will do electronic shutter which means no mechanical shutter is being used up to a sixteen thousandth of a second uh, this means that it's completely silent if you turn always on you'll find that the shutter speed uh, is uh, wh whatever shutter speed you use i should say uh, will be will be um, uh, completely silent you do lose a tiny bit of dynamic range when you use electronic shutter. Not so much that you'd notice, but I believe it's measurable. So I tend to leave it on extended, so I have a mechanical shutter up until a certain point, and then electronic beyond that. Flash settings, I'm not using any flash on this camera, so don't need to worry about those. Exposure preview is useful um, because if you're in the studio, you would want to set this to PAS, not M. So when you've got your camera set to, let's say, f11 at a 60th of a second using studio flash, obviously the available light will give you, in exposure preview, a very dark image. And you look through the viewfinder, you can't see anything. If you turn off the M bit, you don't get an exposure preview. You just get an image through the camera so you can see what you're focusing on. So that's designed for when you're using this camera in a studio situation. I don't do that very often, but I thought it's worth mentioning it. User profiles, you can save your settings as a user profile. Very handy if you want to ever reset the camera to factory default or uh, apply a, a firmware upgrade. Video resolution and video settings, I don't shoot video on this camera, so not particularly important. Same with style. Capture assistance, very important. Grid, self-explanatory. Clipping, if I put that on, I will get a flashing highlight when the, uh, the whites in the image are overexposed or the highlights in the image are overexposed. I use this a lot. So when you look through the viewfinder, if something's overexposed, you'll see it flashing. And combined with the histogram, which is the last one there, this gives you all the exposure information you, you need. Display settings, uh, auto. Now one point I would like to make here is that when I do this, you'll see that it removes the uh, image from the back of the camera because it's now in here. So when I put my eye to the viewfinder, it does that. It's quite possible, if you look very closely, if I can move that up, it's a bit hard to see, there. There it is, there's a little sensor where my finger is, okay? And that can get dirty. If, you'd get, if, if that gets dirty, you'll find that this doesn't operate. And so if you put your eye to the viewfinder and nothing happens, it's probably because this little tiny sensor, it's working now, as you can see as I move my finger, that can get just a little bit of dirt on it, doesn't take much, and it will actually stop this working. So just keep an eye on that. You just clean it with a cloth and it's fine. Uh, most of those you can pretty much ignore, nothing special there. 
auto review I always turn off I don't want the camera to be um, projecting an image in front of me whenever I take a picture I want to see the next shot not the shot I've just taken I can always hit the play button if I want to see the image so turn that off Customize control this is important so first of all edit favorites now that is those first items you see when you go into the menu these items here those you choose in that customized control section here so if I go across edit favorites you turn them on and off in this list and there's lot there's the entire menu selection here available to you to turn on and off I think you can have seven or eight of them I'm not sure if there's a limit I only have seven chosen you can see there's a couple here you can set the camera up for yourself you don't have to uh, you can make it basically work the way you want it to work which is really useful um, function button that's this button here you can now this is this gets a little tricky to explain I can set on and off certain functions which are available on a long press of this button okay and it's the same with this button here if I come out of here you'll see that I've got right wheel button here and what this does it assigns some options to this button so that you can change the function of the button so if I do a long press on this button now this is on AE lock if I put it on self timer and set when I get a single press when I do a single press it's self timer but if I hold it down I get access to other options and then when I change it it is now single press that new option okay it's not quite the same as some cameras where it gives you access to a new menu when you choose the new menu option it remains set to that until you change it again so I have this one set here to daylight uh, daylight white balance so I can change the white balance I have it set on daylight but this changes the white balance and this one here is on a single click set to ISO and if I hold it down long press you'll see that these are the options that I could set for this button but I've chosen ISO so when I hit it once I get ISO and when I if I change the functions of this button it will remain changed until I change it again it's very useful that right wheel button wheel assignment you can make the wheels go left and right uh, also you can reverse the function as well so depending on which mode you're in you can have this is manual aperture priority shutter priority or program you can have the left and the right wheel doing different things um, which is very very useful so in this particular case in in aperture priority the left hand wheel which is this one is exposure compensation and the right hand wheel because it's in aperture priority is the aperture dial in shutter priority the left hand wheel is shutter and the right hand wheel is exposure compensation okay you can only have one set because we're in automatic mode okay so that you can change how these dials work depending on the mode you're in so I tend to use aperture priority automatic all the time which means my left wheel is exposure comp and therefore the right wheel must be aperture because I have to change the aperture somehow so it now if I come out of the menus this is my aperture changing okay and this is my exposure compensation you can see there the little bud and the histogram here moving up and down exposure compensation so exposure compensation and this one is for the aperture all right customize control edit file name if you want to change the way the file name is constructed in the camera you can do that personally I just leave it alone because I do make my own file names later in Lightroom um, file name power saving you can have it turn itself on and off uh, after a certain amount of time acoustic signal um, you can have the camera beep when you're using electronic shutter the camera makes no noise and you don't have any feedback so if you're shooting quickly in electronic shutter you can be taking 10 shots and you don't even know it so sometimes it might be useful for it to make a noise personally I would rather the camera did not make any noise so that if I choose it to be silent it's silent and I don't want it to beep when it focuses or beep when it takes a picture it makes a mechanical noise automatically or when you're using the mechanical shutter of course it does but that's sufficient for me so I leave those alone wheel lock in live view you can actually lock the wheels um, which is handy 
on off and off so that if, when you if you move these by accident they don't do anything i would prefer to leave these unlocked because sometimes you grab the camera and you wonder why the wheel's not doing anything well, that's probably why play mode setup uh, this is when you you play an image after you've taken the picture i'm showing the clipping with the flashing highlights and i'm showing a histogram overlay so that's useful information after you've taken the picture Camera information is to do with your firmware and everything and you can update your firmware if you have the firmware on a card in the camera, like new firmware. Right now there isn't any so it's greyed out, showing me the version that's installed. Um, date and time fairly self-explanatory, again with uh, the language and reset camera to back to default. This is when you would be useful to have a user profile stored so that you don't actually um, lose all of these adjustments that we've just made. And then by going down one more, I'm in the last screen as depicted by that little bar there. I'm now back at the top again. So that's pretty much the way the camera works. And once you've set those menu items, I very rarely need to go into them again because I have access to my favourites when I press the menu button and I very rarely need those, I very rarely change any of those. The key things that I change are the uh, daylight white balance and again shooting raw is really not that important so again very rarely use that. All you really need to do is to be able to change the ISO occasionally and if I was in auto ISO I wouldn't even need to do that. So for me it's aperture, exposure compensation, focusing here, what more do you need? There's just one other aspect of the camera's operation that I want to draw your attention to. Now, you should be able to see here this little LCD screen here. And if I can just angle it right, you'll see it says 5.6, 0, and A. The A is for the exposure mode, aperture priority. The 0 is the exposure compensation, which is on this little wheel here. And you can see it's going plus 1 and now minus 1. Back to, there's minus 1 goes in one third steps back to zero and then the aperture I've chosen is 5.6 which is on the right hand dial which is here because we're in aperture priority and I'm choosing the aperture. Now to change modes is not entirely obvious and if I just click here once you'll see that it changes and I can rotate the dial to choose between aperture priority, manual, shutter priority, program video mode, scene modes and so on. So I'm going to leave that on aperture priority which is my preferred choice but it's just not entirely obvious how that works until someone shows you. Just thought I'd give you that before we actually finish. It's a great camera to use, it's very easy to customise and once you've got it set up you, 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 you've made the camera yours and it will work for you. You really don't want the camera to be working against you. You want the camera to get out of the way as quick as possible and then you control it, not vice versa. So spend some time setting the camera up for the way you want to work and you'll find that you have a much more efficient way of working and you have a much higher hit rate of successful pictures.